In May last year, it was announced that Finnish conductor Pietari Inkinen was chosen as the ninth music director of the KBS Symphony Orchestra, beginning his term in January 2022. The position has been vacant since 2019, and there are high expectations that the young maestro, who's been conducting since his teenage years, will bring a new life to the orchestra. And I'm glad to say that he joins us now for this week's Touch Basin's Soul to share his story and his plans with us today. Mr. Inkinen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I'd like to congratulate you first on your appointment and say welcome to KBS. Uh, your term officially began with a new year, but uh, how's it been going so far working with the orchestra? I've been here now rehearsing two days with them and it's going very well. It's a very good atmosphere. They are very well prepared. Everybody's looking very much forward and uh, in these this time around the world, it's every concert that takes place, it's a uh, it's a small miracle, so we are very lucky to be together in the same room making music. Of course. Uh, yeah, just a couple of days for now, so you're really just getting going. Uh, how was the selection process like uh, going back a few months now? Uh, it must have been quite a different experience, even with that, with the pandemic. Uh, the press conference following your uh, announcement mm. was on Zoom as well. That must all be very different. Yes, I mean, we had to make make plan b's and c's and d's and it's it's a very strange world now for us i mean we used to plan things like four years ahead and you know some singers 10 years ahead and now mm. at some moments we didn't know if we play tomorrow or not or mm. if the next week's program can take place and, and so forth yeah i mean luckily this kind of administrative things through technology many things is possible but it's all about of course live music being in the same room and being in the same room with the audience, nothing is ever going to replace that. So those things have been made more difficult by the by the virus now. And uh, I mean, I know the orchestra since long time. And uh, mm. then the job was vacant. There was this inquiry whether I would be interested, and there were some some other good candidates too. And uh, then I came to conduct the orchestra one more time, and then. <laughs> then they offered the job to me, so it's a, uh, it's um yeah. Thanks, thanks to the orchestra board for the trust and um, to appoint me, and uh, I feel a great trust from the musicians that we will do wonderful things together. You make it sound so easy, but uh, we'll get back to your connections with the career a bit more mm. later. Can you first maybe tell our listeners a bit more about yourself? As we said, you are from Finland originally. Uh, how did you begin your musical journey and what led you to conducting especially as well? Um, music came to my life already that early that I can't even really remember the first moments. We mm. had a had a piano at home and I started to play a little bit in, in the early first years. And uh, Finland has a spe special music institute system it's a relatively geographically large country with very few people but these music institutes basically for free are available wow. mm. everywhere and including my small hometown and my parents just took me to a to a entrance exam as a, being just one hobby amongst others and um, that's where I then discovered the violin. So many people are applying for a piano and they suggested after some tests and, okay, it's a good, good year and wh why don't you try a string instrument? Mm. And, and that, that's how the violin came on board and uh, I played the piano on the side as well and I always, always liked the violin mm. better and that's how my instrument got chosen and then quite soon I... Um, 11 years old, 12 years old, maximum I enrolled to the Sibelius Academy Youth Department in Helsinki. And uh, there also the conducting class professor Jorma Panula, who is a teacher of all this, our Finnish mm. conducting <laughs> gang. So you began conducting at so, that young age? Yes, yeah, so wow. at 14, he, in the youth department, he, he organized a, like a sort of a kid's class. So mm. he wanted to experimental class. And um, I got into that, and that's that's how it all started. It was this this idea of the of the our great great professor, and mm. um, 
it was straight in front of an orchestra. He just put a little note on the no info notice <laughs> wow. board. So any one of you kids want to try conducting, show up next Saturday with the Haydn Symphony num XX. Uh, don't remember which one score and mm. we'll be there with the conducting class orchestra and off you go straight away in front of the <laughs> band without any experience and he was there with he with the video camera filming mm. all of us whatever 20 kids and chose then three three of us as his sort of sure. sort of okay. private pupils in the mm. in the academy and that's how it all started and was a great experiment now I'm here. You, one sure. one guys, one another guys there in the kids class was Mikko Frank, who is chief conductor of Orchestra Philharmonique de Radio France at the moment, and made a made a big career. So two yeah. out two out of three became uh, really international <laughs> conductors. It looks like you never looked back because you built quite a career since then. Uh, it's taken you all over the world, including here in Korea as well, of course. You're not entirely new to Korea, or KBS, in fact, as you led the KBS Symphony Orchestra as a guest conductor in 2006, 2008, and 2020. Mm. Uh, what was the experience like uh, coming to Korea and uh, conducting as you did? Every time very exciting. Very, very fine orchestra. Very passionate audience. Great concert halls exciting culture great food <laughs> it's 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 great to be here in your kbs symphony orchestra youtube page announcement you talk there also about korea's passionate audiences mm. you also say the commitment from the korean audience is unique what do you mean by that can you explain I that mean, a bit you more, can please? you can really feel this energy and like for example one of my very regular um, soloists Vadim Repin, who is coming here next month again, like he's been coming here 40 years or something, and he played a tour with me also in Korea with my German orchestra. And like this, it was everywhere around we went. Row after a row, young kids with violin cases in the front <laughs> rows, like like a fan club for Vadim, and mm. with such a passion, also kids there. Unique, fantastic keep this going it's very very <laughs> is it really easy. unique is it yeah, different I, from other countries that you've been yeah, to yeah i mean i somehow i mean there is a lot a lot of range of concert goers yes but somehow this kind of energy mm. that was in the hall here it is it is very good well, it's fascinating so it must be exciting for you to become a music director yes. here then can you explain for our listeners perhaps what a music director does exactly? How is it different from a step up from being a conductor? What does the role entail? So guest conductor, yes, you sometimes even the orchestra asks that they would like just a specific program. Could you do this and and so forth? And you show up, you plan this like we spoke a few years before the concert takes eventually plays and then you, you show up and have a couple of days of rehearsals and hopefully everything goes well and off you go and maybe come back <laughs> some years later again or maybe not. But music director really should know every detail about the orchestra and the members and the problems and uh, really help things to improve. Mm. Musically, the organization, ev everything the orchestra deals with mm. every day it's it's a big task easier said than done but but the focus should be on every detail in my opinion right what it what it means or oh, in general music director's responsibility is is the general overall musical goals all the details of the programs inviting guest artists who should conduct and who should not and why there is no point that I do certain things and someone else comes next week and does the complete opposite. That sure. doesn't, it's just confusing for the orchestra. So this overall artistic responsibility. Of course, hiring new musicians, being part of the auditions, this is also a big, very important role to, to, to guide this direction to a clear direction mm. in this hiring process as well. And uh, yes, being uh, 
depending on a little bit on the orchestra and the funding model, how much mm. in America you have a lot to do with fundraising. Mm. The government subsidized orchestras, it's less less of an issue, but mm. sometimes, you know, you have also a hybrid, you need a bit of both. And sure. yeah, you should be involved in everything. And some of these, a lot of this stuff can, of course, be done via technology and some of it's some of it's more efficient when you are there and right of course so you talk about directions and goals what goals and directions are you going to be setting for uh, kbs orchestra i i try to be in the next years more and more physically present here also throughout the country performing not only in seoul and throughout of course there's a great advantage being a broadcasting orchestra the reach to the whole population through TV, radio, again, through technology mm. is, is an asset which many orchestras don't have like we do here. So we should, of course, use all of this pot potential. Do you and want to bring changes? Do you have some idea of how you want to uh, put your stamp on this orchestra? Yeah, I mean, the quality, the, the, at the end of the day, this high standard of playing and even pushing that higher and higher, mm. that's what really excites at the end. And that's what bring, bring people back to the hall. There are no tricks, really. Mm. I mean, you can play... So you're not going to be trying some different colour of music or yeah, I mean, directions? Yes, I mean, the repertoire decisions are also important. Mm. You should not take the easy routes and you should challenge the audience as well, especially once they start to trust you that with this guy, it's, it's going to be good. And it doesn't really matter what we play, and they come. This is the this is the point you want to be at. That the public trusts us mm. that we deliver always something good quality and exciting on stage. It doesn't wa matter what we play, and that's that's for sure a a big goal to reach this point. And also not only in Korea but uh, internationally too. That we will be more and more noticed. That oh, they, those guys are doing something special. That, that would be a great achievement when we get to that point. Sure. And finally, what do you hope the audiences here in Korea take away uh, from the KBS Orchestra during your tenure? I, I hope that they will, after a concert, run faster and faster to buy a ticket to the next concert. <laughs> Sure. OK. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. We look forward to what you will do with the KBS Orchestra going forward. Uh, we've been speaking to uh, Pietari Inkinen, the new music director of the KBS Symphony Orchestra. Thank you for your time once again today. Thank you. Kamsamida.